I got paint on my legs. Okay, literally, this just came to me like 20 minutes ago. I don't know why I'm here. Welcome to the Black Bell after hours. It is approximately, let me just grab my laptop. Already off to an amazing start. Deja here. First of all, look at my new laptop screen cover from that last video photo shoot. You guys usually can't see my three tier cart, which I do have. Yes, I'm a reader. These are all on red, but that's nobody's business. So it is 10.55 p.m. right now. I decided to have a painting night all by my lonesome. I thought it would be cool to talk to you guys a little bit while I painted. And I could not decide for the life of me what I wanted to paint. So we're in June right now. June, if you guys didn't know, is Pride Month. Pride Month for the LGBTQ plus community, um, which I am an ally of. I put a poll up on my Instagram asking you guys if you wanted a video about book recommend recommendations that have good um, LGBTQ plus reps. And you guys said you did. So here I am giving the people what they want you're welcome but i also thought you know why not paint while i do it it might be a fun thing it might crash and burn but that don't matter that don't really matter uh i have three books to share with you two of them are very very dear to my heart one of them i like a lot let's just get into it this is my first video of books and brushes woo woo all right i think i'm ready to start you guys i literally been like not procrastinating but like it's kind of harder than i thought it would be to set this thing up listen it's not perfect but we're gonna get there ignore my hands guys like i know i have man hands please just be nice to me literally that's that's too much paint so the first book i'm gonna talk about it's Little in Line by Brandy Colbert. This could be a total fail and never leave my drafts, but I'm like praying that's not what happens, you know? Little in Line is a story that, um, about siblings, actually. The thing that stands out <laughs> about them is that Suzette is a black girl and Lionel is a ginger, a white boy with red hair. So, um, Obviously, they're not blood-related siblings. They are... Wow. This book is actually really close to this paint. Why didn't y'all say nothing? So, alright. I got that on. So, Little and Lion follows the story of Suzette, a 16-year-old black girl. She's coming home to her mom, her stepfather, and her stepbrother, Lionel. But they're really close. Lionel and Suzette. But... They, they call each other Little and Lion. Coming home from the summer from being away at a boarding school. And um, she's nervous about it because when she left, Lionel wasn't doing his best. He had just been diagnosed with um, bipolar disorder. And so Suzette, like, isn't nervous around him, but she hasn't seen him in a long time. And she knows that the mental illness hit, like, Lionel dealing with his mental illness has put a tear in the relationship but not really just like a little bit of distance between them so the reason little and lion is on this list is because suzette our main character is a bisexual girl throughout the story um suzette feels guilty for something that has happened while she was away at boarding school. And we're, we're piecing together the story as we go along. I literally got this paint from Walmart, so you know you gotta shake it up a little. Suzette and Lionel are so close that they even run in the same friend group. Um, so when Suzette comes home, her and Lionel both kind of have to re-enter their, their friend groups, you know? Lionel is Suzette's most important person. Um, she values him a lot. She cares about him. She, he is her best friend. So when, so when Lionel meets a girl at a party, Suzette's really happy for him. But when Suzette meets a girl at a flower shop and later learns that it is the same girl Lionel um, has eyes for, she's a little less happy. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Nobody wants to read a story about a brother and sister fighting over the same person. That's exactly what I was thinking. 
but I still give it a chance because you know first of all black main character and I just have to give every book I see like that chance all right if you're judging my uh bottle cap uh paint then you need to get a life thank you but it was done actually really well um Brandy did a really good job of showing the friendship between Lionel and Suzette personally I felt like the main love interest the girl that they were both uh fighting over not not fighting over the both the girl that they were both pine af pining after wasn't worth it I really appreciated the way Brandy portrayed her main our main character what little is this is Suzette she never really she's trying to figure herself out like she knows she has feelings for these girls but she doesn't really know like what that means for her and it's okay and all of the, her friends are supportive like it's a really supportive group of friends and it was one of the first it's one of the first and only books that i have on my shelves that has a non-straight female main character like if you're struggling with your own sexuality um and nervous about like i feel like this book is just very like support they like all of the characters in this book are very supportful and it's very uplifting and they don't make a big deal out of sexuality you know, like it's not really dry but i think i'm just gonna go for it because you know that's my life the next book i'm gonna talk about is um it was a popular book a few years ago i don't know if it's still popular now but it's amazing okay so aristotle and dante discover the series of the universe is a uh, coming of age story that follows two boys, Aristotle and Dante, uh, who discover the secrets of the universe while also discovering themselves. So the story is told in Aristotle's point of view um, and it's told in the past like 19 something, I don't know, not too far back, but oh, I should mention that like one of my favorite things about this is that uh, they are both Latino boys. Um, but so the story follows Aristotle, a 15 year old boy who, um, is depressed. It, this is never said, okay? This is never said in the book. Um, this is just my personal feelings about it. Uh, but he does not know who he is. He is very much a homebody. He's the youngest of like four, but all of his siblings are super like a lot older than him. So he's kind of like the only child, but um, he has two loving parents. One day in the summer, um, he goes to the swimming hole uh, where he meets Dante. <sighs> Dante, 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 Dante. He, oh my gosh, you guys, this story, I can't even get over it. This is a story about discovering everything that matters in the world and discovering love and friendship and happiness and learning that you can choose happiness this book follows dante and ari over a couple of summers and it shows about how the relationship grows how it changes and how their bond how their bond changes but never breaks ari and dante are both latino boys Dante is more fair skinned um, and he has to go, he deals with that problem that most mixed people deal with of um, neither side thinks I'm good enough to, you know, claim that side of my heritage. I'm recommending this one because it reminds me of the small things in life that you have to celebrate. This book is the opposite of toxic masculinity that Dante He's a sweet, sensitive boy, and so is Ari, but Ari thinks that that sensitivity makes him weak. If you're a fan of, like, really good writing and character-driven books, there there's lines in here that kind of, like, take my breath away and think have to, like, rethink how I feel about myself and others and what really matters in the world, you know? And... Benjamin Alira Science, the author of this book, was able to do this through the story of a 15 year old who was hiding from himself. And that's one of the beauty of books. So I highly suggest, highly, highly suggest Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I will be doing a reread of this book and 
giving you like a full layout of why I love it. We're gonna give this some time to dry. It also touches on the fact that it is in the 1900s and they do face the discrimination that people of the LGBT community felt back then and still to this day. So there is a trigger warning of that. Um, like I said, this book made me cry. Oh, I haven't said that, but this, this book made me cry. So be careful of that, but it is a five out of five star read. All right, um, I'm completely winging it at this point. A, another five out of five star read. And unlike the other two, this one actually has a sequel, which I read and was also a five out of five. Just saying. Because You'll Never Meet Me by Leah Thomas. You guys, I think it's wet still. This book follows the story of two boys, one named Oliver and one named Moritz. No lie, I read it in 2016 and I still think about it to this day. So Oliver is allergic to electricity and not in a not in a when he gets near a phone he sneezes no so oliver is allergic to electricity in a sense that whenever he gets too close it short circuits him out um it causes seizures in his mind so that's ollie moritz um so oliver lives in america i can't remember which southern state it is but it's one of those that have like a lot of country um a lot of country road which is exactly what he needs so all the way on the other side of the world we have moritz who lives in germany stop because i stopped talking because i'm focusing so hard on the other side of the world in germany we have moritz a 16 year old boy who was born without eyeballs also he was born with a very weak heart so when he was a baby they um put a heart pacer in his chest and that's the name of the book, Because You'll Never Meet Me. If they were to ever meet Oliver and Moritz, they would literally kill each other. Or I guess they wouldn't kill each other, but one of them would kill the other. The story is told entirely of letters sent between Oliver and Moritz. The first chapter begins with Oliver, and they are connected through, um, through his doctor, Dr. Stash. So it's just Oliver and his mom, and they live in the middle of nowhere. Oliver's never really had friends, so when Dr. Stash gives him the opportunity to have a pen pal with someone who's sort of like him, as in someone who is abnormal, um, Oliver eats up the chance. And Oliver is the excited one, the energetic one, the one who's ready for it. And he soon learns that Moritz is way not like that. Moritz is formal, he is an orphan. Um, and he is mature. He had to grow up hard in this world. People see him as a monster, but he's absolutely cool. He uses echolocation because he has no eyes. He uses echolocation to get around. So he has no eyes, but he can see everything, you guys. Everything. They're both kind of superhuman. Um, and the reason I loved it so much is because you can literally see how their relationship grows, how they go from becoming strangers to becoming literal best friends. Their story is heartbreaking because they've gone through a lot of stuff in their short years, but they learn how, like even from, I love it because like, from, the distance is nothing to them. You can be worlds away from someone and they can still mean everything to you. Also like, these boys are really funny. Oliver and Moritz are very opposite of each other, very opposite of each other. And they kind of learn how to love themselves through loving each other. And it's not like, it's not like romantic love. That's why I put this, I put this on this list hesitantly because it's not, it is romantic love. Like, I don't want to, I, like, I think you have to decide for yourself. Any of you guys have read this or heard about it, please let me know. It's it's one of my favorite books ever. All the ones on this list, this one's probably the, the, the most underrated and the least heard of. So I would have to suggest if you were to pick up anything or take anything away from anything that I said today, it's you should read because you'll never meet me. All right, peeps.
I think I'm done. You guys, it's 11.57. I, I did that in like an hour. I hope you enjoyed this first edition of Books and Brushes. I'm sorry about like the way I described it. Like I I did not go into a lot of detail um, and I feel like I strayed off the theme a little bit here, but that's what happens when I'm trying to multitask. I was too focused, heavily involved in the project, okay? So it's obviously not done drying because I literally just finished, but I wanna show you guys what it looks like right now because I'm actually pretty proud, especially since I did not know what I was gonna do coming into this, so this is the final product yeah i hope you enjoyed this this was kind of fun i like this this was real chill i've been wanting to paint more and you know what it's gonna give me more reasons to talk about books that i don't really talk about um but yes down below let me know down below in the comments some more things that i should paint i'm doing this again whether you guys like it or not i'm gonna go to bed maybe i'm actually kind of awake but sleep well don't let the bed bugs bite and good night